Okay, I think I think we, we should probably start. Do you want to, do you want to kick off, Jane? Sure. Can you see the screen? We can, thank you. Okay. Okay, so here's the uh, survey. Uh, so just go through the questions. The first question, uh, just to ask uh, people to identify themselves. Uh, so here, we're saying that if you identify yourself with uh, multiple of those um, personas, then you fill this out multiple times. Uh, do you think this is necessary to, to separate, separate out to fill this out multiple times? I, th I think if the audience is going to be the end user group, I think that's possibly overkill to do it that way. Okay, so maybe because most most of these many end users, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We also included the vendors, but uh, yeah, but I probably it's more more for end users. So just to remove this. Yeah. Just say multi select then, otherwise it's too. Yeah, good idea. Too complicated otherwise. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure there are a bunch of the end users who are actually, um, uh, you know, project they could contributors to projects and things like that. So, I okay. think th those things are still valid. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Uh, and what project? What storage project you are using or contributing to? That's the next question. So mm -hmm. here we include uh, storage projects in CNCF, um, and then the other, if uh, you know, if there is a project that is not yep. CNCF, you want to specify, you can specify here, anything here. Uh, so, so first, uh, the the first question, anyone has any comments on on this category? So this. Uh, this looks okay. Do we need to add more or is it too much or, <laughs> or just keep it this way? You can always comment later. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. Okay. Do you know what would be, um, actually, sorry, just something that occurred to me. It, it might be useful to have a question at the top to kind of say, have you seen or are you aware of the of the white paper that we that we did? Because at least oh yeah, sure, it might, it might make them look at it. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Uh, that's a question. Just to say, oh, oh I have some, uh, yes, yes. Landscape white paper. Oh, can I include a link here? What is your experience with uh, cloud native storage? And the next one, how is your storage solution deployed? Uh, so hardware solution, data center, software components, and commodity hardware, public cloud providers. So Quinton had a, has a comment here. Maybe we should add another category, uh, storage, storage as a service providers that are not primary cloud providers, if they are offering mm -hmm. like, like the database as a service on public cloud or something, so. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Anything else? We just add, should we add a other? I'll just add other. Yeah. Specify. And what data access interface layers are consumed so there's some multi-select questions. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Then next is the block section. So here are the questions if you have block storage. Um, here are all the questions. 
Uh, so the first question, basically, what is the block storage system you're using? Um, so Quinnen has a comment here that if uh, it is a well-known storage system, then user can just uh, skip all the other remaining questions. If it's, I mean, I don't know what is, uh, if it's AWS, EPS, of course, it's well-known. So uh, should we give any examples here or just to let the person to the judgment or? Hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, I think, hmm. I think if, if, um, if they're using, you know, a, a well-known vendor or a well-known cloud provider, then it's probably right. So I guess a lot of the, a lot of the rest of the questions kind of become, um, we sort of within the, within the storage working group anyway, we should be able to determine the rest of the stuff. What, what do other people, do, do, do other people have any comment on that? Do we want to list uh, some names? Because I, uh, I, 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 I would, I think I would struggle if we, if we were to yeah. bullet point. Maybe just, maybe just leave it to, uh, to the person, whoever is filling this out to decide. And then, yeah. you know, we can, all, you know, if, if they give a name, then if we don't know, then we can always do some research and maybe reach out to the person who answered the question right. yeah okay okay and then the protocols and also whether it's a uh, local remote or distributed yeah those are yeah, a lot of those can probably be skipped if it's a uh, well-known um and also so most of these questions we also added a don't know at the end if you know it's probably sometimes people don't really know um then the top storage, the storage topology centralized distributed sharded hyper converged hmm. is that something specific to to block or should we uh, or, or oh, so that... basically i well the thing is if this, the problem is if we just uh, I have this question in every category. So for file, we have this one as well. So if you're only using block, then you just answer this one, you skip the whole file section. But if we just make this um, uh, one question, then I just, I mean, how do we differentiate? Uh, excuse me. That's why I kind of, uh, so kind of those questions are repeated actually <laughs> for block and file. So we can go through this and maybe decide do we want to take this out or because you know they could be using distributed blog distributed file right so this could be different mm -hmm. That's those are in both sections i i think that um we would probably know the answer to that based on yeah so basically a lot of those can be answered already if they just say what is the storage system you're using, right? Yeah. Um, but but probably not all of them. There are so many storage systems. Let's think. I mean, yeah. If if it's just like AWS, EDS, you know, those we probably know. But I just can't say that for every storage system. Um, so here, basically, okay. If you already specify the name, maybe you can just skip all of those questions if you if you want yeah. to. Um, let, let, I mean, let's, let's, let's leave them in for now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's probably, yeah, the, the Quintum saying there are too many questions. <laughs> Basically, those questions are repeated for each, you know, for blog and file. So, so we can, yeah, go through this and then we can, maybe we can talk at the end. I think question eight and question nine are probably sort of in, in my mind, they're question marks. I, I, I think whatever products they say they're using, We'll probably understand those the answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah. So they can probably uh, just uh, skip all of those if we already know the yeah. correct name. Yeah. I think question ten and question eleven. Those 
those are interesting to 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 understand because you know if they if they if lots of we might actually end up having um, some use case scenario or, or you know maybe some some focus on perhaps I don't know snapshots or encryption or erasure coding or something. Um, so so those are probably worth those are probably mm -hmm. worth asking because different systems can support multiple things generally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then yeah, the, and then the, the physical <clears throat> oh, no, the layer. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'd agree with Quentin. That's probably not that important. Uh huh. Okay. So just leave a don't know or they 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 don't have to fill out this one. Sure. Okay. And okay, file, next file systems is pretty much very similar to the block section, basically. Um, so if you answered what is the file system you're using, then you can probably skip everything below. So mm -hmm. the same, you know, the, um, okay, so we do have this one because we have a table. I don't know if this is maybe too complicated. So I just added to don't know here. What is the underlying storage layer for the file system? Hmm. This is the, you know, yeah, we, we have this table in the white paper, right? So yeah. it's kind of complicated. Maybe people wouldn't pay that much attention to all the details, but we have a do, don't know here at the end. Clint, I think, I think um, that table um, was something you had put in. Do you think that that's where it's collecting from the end users? Sorry, one more time, Alex? The the question fourteen. I think that table was was something um, you might have put together. I was wondering, do we, do you think we need it from? We need to collect that information from the end users. I I think that um, this came after describing that there is essentially like complexity uh, under the file system. Like there's different ways of running like the the underlying storage, and I don't right. think the I think the audience is probably ready to answer mm, this okay, so. more generally. I think it's a pretty, it's a more complicated question. Okay. Uh, what does everybody else think? Yeah, uh, for what is right, okay. so yeah, I'd probably agree with that. We can maybe remove this one then. I'll just yeah. remove this. I'll remove this. Yeah. Okay, so the protocols, uh, I don't know if it's worthwhile asking this. Quinn says maybe all of this are hidden. Uh, so I do add it, I don't know here. Sure. Uh, and then storage topology, and so all of those are the same as before. Data, uh, the data protection, data yeah, I services. Think, I think so, so similar to block, I think. Question mm -hmm. 16 is probably not so important, but question 17 mm -hmm. and 18 are probably useful. 17 and 18, okay. Hmm. Okay, maybe we'll, okay, well, maybe after we're done, we'll decide and should we remove some of those or still keep them or, and, okay, and then still have this last one, the same, you have this. Uh, yeah, I, I think question 19 probably isn't needed again. Probably should just remove this one? Yeah. Okay. Unless anybody thinks it's important. Okay. Uh, okay so for object store, uh, I basically it's just uh, mainly just answer what object store you're using, uh, and then you can skip this one. Um, but I'm thinking so that's kind of saying. But if you are setting this up yourself, uh, if it's like a local object store right? like a uh, self or Swift, then you maybe still will be looking at this layer. So, mm -hmm. um, so here I say, okay, if you're using object store from a public cloud provider, skip this one. Otherwise they can still answer this. I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? <laughs> Is this not, not that important? We should just get rid of this question. Um, so, so I think, 
if, if we're looking at this in terms of what's useful to us in terms of what to focus on next and which projects to look at and that kind of thing, I'm not sure that I, 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 I'm just trying to think, I, I don't know that that actually gives us information to mm -hmm. make a, I mean, it's, it might be an interesting statistic to kind of say, okay, 50% 50 of our end users are, are doing solid state versus, but I, okay. I, I don't know that it's actually something we can use. Okay. So probably we maybe just need to just remove this one for every, because we also have this one uh, for the blog and just remove this one for yeah, that probably, that probably makes question, sense. Really. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I think I also have this one for it. This one basically it just listed mm -hmm. all the key value stores. This is from the white papers. Those are all right. referenced in the white paper, basically. Uh, so I don't know if there are other well-known ones that we want to list here. Um, okay, so I'll just remove this question too. And so... So the database, do we want to list uh, any um, well-known databases or just let the user answer this? That's a good question. Because some of this actually, I was, uh, so like some of this, right? And there's some overlapping, because it's uh, like Cassandra, I thought I was thinking it, it should belong here, but it's actually here. Um, but we can list a few, yeah. if, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, that's a good point because Cassandra, for example, is, is often, and CockroachDB, for example. Are yeah, often. yeah, this one too. Yeah, those, both of those, I thought it would belong here, but it's actually, because it also has the, the key value APIs, that's why it's actually listed in the white paper. So that's why I put them here, but they could be here too, so. Uh, um, so you can be in both places then those maybe, I don't know, <laughs> Cassandra and, okay, so do we want to list anything here or no? Let's, let's put it at, I mean, what, what do the other people on the call think? Do we want to list a set of databases or just have them input one? I think the other option would capture them in case somebody wants to specify them as key value stores. The, I'm sorry? The other option would capture Cassandra and you know other databases if they're using them as key value stores. Right, understood. Okay, so we can do it. Uh, would the purpose of this just to, to round out our knowledge of what the most popular mm -hmm. ones are? Or what's the, like, are we, are we asking in context of like, who's running it on Kubernetes or you know, what's, what do we actually uh, need to, to, to so get knowledge? Do you have an orchestra? Um, okay, so maybe, we, okay, so, so okay, maybe we should add some questions in here. Um, so, so we do have, we do have this oxygen section about Kubernetes or what container orchestration system do you use? We do have those section here. Um, and then you know, the plugins, some questions about plugins. So we do have it here. But, but on 20, 24, we, when we're trying to understand where people are, I mean, I think we can find out the popularity of databases in a couple mm -hmm. ways. Are we trying to understand if they're being used in cloud native ways or what? Well, so the uh, so we're going to send this question there to the the end CNCF and the user group, right? So we um, assume they are using them in a cloudy way, or how do we how how do you phrase those questions? So. If I'm trying to, if I try and capture those, those thoughts for a second. So I think we want to get a little bit of an understanding um, as to what the end users are actually using. Um, because 
we might see, oh, I don't know, 60% of them are using CockroachDB and therefore maybe a use case on CockroachDB might be useful. Um, but similarly, we might also find that they're using some projects which maybe is a candidate for um, becoming a CNCF project that isn't one yet, for example. So, so finding out what, what those end users are focusing on might be an interesting, might provide us with some interesting data. But I, I do also agree with Clint. I think it's probably worth having a, question, a more generic question, um, maybe in the orchestrator section where we say, okay, which orchestrator are you using? But then with what stateful workloads are you? Oh yeah, that's a good point. Okay, maybe okay, I'll add this, uh, like what workload? What workload? What type of workload? Let's see running. Um, <coughs> container. And I, I think it's okay to keep that generic. Um, there might be a way to make it a little more useful by setting context to say, you know, out of these, out of these database technologies, which ones are you challenged by? Like, which ones are you thinking about uh, operating differently? Like, you know, which ones are you interested in? Um, yeah, maybe maybe we can do that as 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 questions related to that question you're just typing. Um, so, if we say, what stateful workloads are you running today? Mm -hmm. And then the next question could be like. In three months' time, what do you want to do? In six months' time, or something. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, Clint? Yeah, yeah, it does. I think another issue is people may use these databases or key value stores, and they may use Kubernetes, but they may not, they may not use them together. Do we want to? So yeah, it's, that's kind of kind of tricky. How how do we separate those? Um, because yeah, so they they may be thinking about okay, they will be today they're running this maybe not on Kubernetes, but they are maybe want to move them to Kubernetes in a few months or something, right? So um, how do we? Um, so maybe do we want to phrase the question as what types of workloads are you running? on the container orchestration system and then have another question to say what workloads are you consuming from the container orchestration system or something like that. Mm -hmm. So so we sort of differentiate what they're consuming externally to Kubernetes. Yeah, that, that would be an interesting viewpoint actually. Because I, I kind of suspect there must be quite a lot of people who are consuming stateful work. They're, they're run, they might be running applications that are using state, but the thing that's storing the state might be outside of Kubernetes. I guess that would be a very common use case. So what type of workloads are you running? Now this will be include both or? Not on containers, or should we just say not on containers? <laughs> or did this include both type of workloads that you're running? And then, and then specifically, what are you running on containers? And uh, what do you want to run in the future or something? Or, or perhaps we phrase the question along the lines of do you currently run um, database and key value stores inside Kubernetes or outside Kubernetes? And then do you plan? to run databases and key value stores in the next three months or six months or something. Outside of uh, like um, non-container? Well, um, we can say, I don't know. Not, uh, not uh, something like not, not on containers or something. Or, uh, uh, or maybe you should come up with a list of application categories and then uh, reuse the same list for 
on containers, off containers. I don't know how mm -hmm. detailed you want to get in that list either. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the detailed would be stateful or stateless, and that's all the description. But you could drill down into specific things like, I don't know, Kafka, MongoDB, if you wanted to get that detailed. Mm -hmm. I think at the very least to be useful, it might be, say, transactional databases, uh, key value stores, and just put some broader categories. But maybe we want to get more specific. Mm. Yeah. The, 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 I think the, the problem with a lot of these surveys is you, if they're very, very long, you'll, we might struggle to get. Um, yeah, not only that, if you get too detailed on specific implementations, like you list Mongo, then you arguably, you'll leave somebody out and it just gets interminable. So yeah. I think maybe putting it, but just the two categories of stateful and stateless aren't enough detail to be enlightening. So something in between. Uh, I mean, what, 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 what if we say, what if we say, um, do you run stateful workloads um, in your orchestrated environment? And in brackets, put like example databases and message buses and I don't know, you know, just 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 give maybe a couple of examples of classes of stuff that, that could be considered yeah. stateful. Maybe you want to add in production because. If you just want to know what people are doing, I think you can just go to Docker Hub, which sorts by popularity of download, and you get a pretty good clue of what people are at least playing around with. Doesn't mean they're putting them in production, though. So, yeah, actually, that's good. Okay. Okay. I mean, for the examples, you might as well pick them off. The, go get the popularity sort order on Docker Hub and mm -hmm. choose whatever bubbles to the top as your examples, because obviously those are the ones people are familiar with. Okay, so could uh, do that just to get some from there. Okay. Should we cover the rest of the questions then? Okay. I, uh, so this is actually the, the end, basically. Just okay. uh, yeah, the illustration, uh, you know, the plugins, what type of plugins they're using, what storage system. Um, so the last question, maybe we can just, re just remove it. But this is what are the frameworks and tools in addition to the plugins? But they probably already answered that in, in the beginning. Uh, when they say, what are the projects that you are using or something? Yeah. Okay. okay, so, uh, okay, so. Okay, so if, if we can, if we can tidy this up um, mm -hmm. and get it to, um, and get it to Cheryl, um, she'll have a quick review and then forward it on to the to the end users. Um, mm -hmm. okay. and, um, and then she's also going to show you a session where we can, where we can uh, attend uh, one of their meetings. Um, probably because I, I, I believe it's, it might be in two weeks time. So uh, we, can, we can then sort of um, prep over email for that session. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, I think we, okay, let me just go through this one again because we talked about, okay, so I'll remove this question for, mm -hmm. from all. And so we'll keep 10 and 11. So for the rest of them, you think we can just uh, remove them? Because it's I think maybe I obviously. Think eight, okay. eight, eight and nine can go, yeah. Okay. And this one too, since you've you selected, if you give an answer and then 
you should we can figure out and yes yeah, probably this can go to okay so that will make this uh, simpler yeah and then they can still skip if they want to so still ask ask them if they want to skip this too or we just want to keep then only two questions the body can answer yeah we'll just leave it there yeah yeah it's only not that, that many anymore okay okay so we'll do the same thing for the for the file systems we just you know, get rid of all of this uh just to keep data production and the uh, data services okay mm -hmm. okay and uh, okay and then okay so i need to do some search on the docker hub to get a list of things people are using okay cool so so when, when you're when you're done if you can uh, send it to the um to the mailing list then i guess you know um anybody can put in any final comments and okay because of the sort by popularities, Postgres is uh, number one. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and even though it says database, there's key value stores like Redis is in there as number three. Okay. So it's probably okay. We don't have to really differentiate. We just put those names there, just say, and then people can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, create. I don't know. Create. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, I'll just to use this one as an example then. Those are, okay, so this is database. They do, they probably, okay, so they, they kind of put everything together, right? So this includes the, the key values, okay. They didn't really differentiate those two. Yeah, that probably makes sense. I think the people who post these images self-classify, so it's just whoever published it gets to pick their own category. You can see a category list over on the left. So okay. it's some of these have gone in under uh, arguably bad categories. I don't know. <laughs> I don't see it. There's no key value. They, I think they probably included key value in as part of database, which yeah, well, is we fine. I think. Yeah. Number three on this list, so that's mm -hmm. that's that's clearly a key value store, right? No, uh, I, yeah. I, I suspect we're overthinking it. We we just need a few examples, really, just just yeah. to get them going, and then they can freeform type the rest. Okay. All right. Um, from my point of view, I had a quick update. I was um, prepping the white paper to publish it onto the um, the storage working group GitHub page, similar to what the serverless working group did. Um, it was a bit fiddly to convert the Google Doc into Markdown, but I think I'm just about done now. So I'll get that PR in today or tomorrow. Um, and then we can draw a line under that. Great. Did um did anyone else want to raise any other things or well in that case I think we're done for today. Okay. Thanks Thank everyone. You. Thanks, Shane. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye guys.